Hello, good morning and welcome to the uh, Copenhagen Suborbitals Nexo 2 Harbor Acceptance Test. We are doing this first out of two big tests before we actually reach the uh, actual launch day. And the whole concept of a harbor acceptance test is that we go through the entire flat flight plan for the launch and we try to simulate that, that particular launch day we are all aiming for. We, we have to rehearse it a few times to make sure we get it right. And especially the first time we're doing the full setup and the full flight plan, then we it's just really, really convenient if you forget something, if you need a, a special piece of tool that you forgot on your packing list or something like this, then it's just so much easier to get that stuff done, uh, get the piece you need and then write a note in your packing list, all the procedures and so on, so that we get everything, uh, so that we get everything ready uh, for a launch where we won't find ourselves missing anything that can basically, I mean even one little piece we miss, uh, we missed back at, 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 uh, at port that could basically scrub a whole launch. So we're trying to rehearse this a few times and so the Harbor Acceptance Test is the first one out of these. The second test we will come to at a later point, that's actually two weeks from now, that will be the SAT, so that's the C acceptance test. Basically we'll be doing this whole thing once more. Uh, we will be simulating a full two-day uh, launch campaign at uh, Bon Hon, uh, and we will be doing basically the same thing we did at the Harbor acceptance test, only this time we will be doing it out to sea. Because launching from sea is something that will, there is a sea factor. I mean a water factor and stuff just works differently when you're out to sea and we need to get used to that as well so that we can basically be really well rehearsed on launch day. So as we are trying during this head test to simulate and this will be the actual launch day we're trying to simulate here. Then the last few things we did last night before we, we went to bed and, and got uh, some hours of good sleep is that we left the rocket in a state where it is, uh, it's basically powered on. The telemetry will be running all night, also to furthermore test systems again. And then we wrapped it in, our, uh, in, in this little raincoat we have. So it should be able to sit completely still, tucked away nicely uh, at the launch rail while we go to bed and sleep overnight. So first thing in the morning, pulled off the ring cover, check all systems are still running, and then six or eight points later in the checklist, we're steaming up. Um. Now, of course, when, uh, when we're doing this harbor acceptance test, we are basically not sailing anywhere. We might have one of the small rip boats uh, talking about in the harbor and, and doing a few rehearsals and, uh, and testing out the equipment, but basically no ships are sailing anywhere. And we have to somehow simulate that as well. So sometimes during the day when we are offloading, for example, right before launch, we need to evacuate Sputnik uh, to make it unmanned, of course. And then we have to transfer the whole pack crew and the Sputnik crew somewhere else. And in this case, we'll be transferring them to one of our uh, big rip boats and then sailing them off to a safe distance. So in this case here at the harbor, we would simply just uh, get ashore and uh, assemble around uh, either one of our tents, a pavilion, a table, a light pole, anything that will resemble that particular boat at that point. Team uh, pad confirms readiness to begin off over. So, we also learned from the launch of Nexo 1 and that has, uh, that has brought about quite a few changes in the flight plan. 
uh, one of the things we learned, for example, was that uh, taking this long journey from uh, an exo spaceport out to the launch point and then starting to do a lot of work there just means that the preparation at the particular launch point took many, many hours. And then we ran into trouble, so it took even longer. So we tried to, uh, to learn from that and figure out, okay, how can we do this differently and smarter? So we basically then cut the whole flight plan in two. So now that we're doing, we're, we're basically doing a, an official two-day launch campaign. The first day will be done in uh, next to spaceport, a little bit like we're doing here at the hat. We won't be moving anywhere, but a lot, as many preparations as we possibly can do at port will be done at port. Then we'll steam out early in the morning on the launch day. And instead of waiting till we arrive at the launch point, then we will actually start some of the preparations we can do en route. We'll start them a couple of hours before we reach the launch point. So, according to this revised uh, flight plan, we have, when we arrive at the launch point, we're basically ready to start loading fuel. And from the point where we start loading fuel, there is actually not that many steps before we do the actual launch. So, this uh, hardware acceptance, acceptance test here, that's going to be the first dress rehearsal to see if this new concept works. And then we'll get another and even more realistic um, evaluation of this concept when we reach the uh, SAT test, the C acceptance test. And if it works out, if everyone's happy uh, at SAT that uh, this new way of doing the flight plan, that that actually works, then uh, I think we're definitely going to go with that uh, during launch. And. Uh, also having many lot a lot fewer less uh, preparations to do from we arrive at the launch point till we actually launch that's hopefully also going to give us a, a way better estimate of when the actual launch is going to take place, place take place it's it's difficult to predict especially if we run into trouble but let's assume we don't run into trouble arrive at the launch point and then start the last part of the flight plan there then we should have a pretty good idea of when the actual launch will be and we'll be hopefully able to predict it with some certainty. Copenhagen Suborbitals is a non-profit, all-volunteer project. We all work for free in our spare time. And the reason why we can make all this happen is because of the help from all you people around the world. So please click on the link and go to our website and sign up as a Copenhagen Suborbital supporter because it's all the small monthly donations from all you rocket fans from all over the world that makes this amazing project possible. Thank you.